What's up, party people? Welcome to the Honest Trailer Commentary for Joker. This is a show about a show that you've hopefully already watched on this same channel. And if you stick around, we're gonna talk about the Joker, our deepest, most innermost, mm. most twisted thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> uh, then we are going to show you some deleted scenes, uh, respond to questions and comments from viewers mm. like you, and tease next week's Honest Trailer. Uh, I've got, ooh, what a society I've got with me today. I've got oh Dan, mm -hmm. Lon, Joe. Let's get damaged, baby. Mm. Let's get yeah, damaged. Unlike, in it. unlike some honest trailers, this seems like the perfect one to discuss this movie. <laughs> I okay. think we're all well qualified to discuss Joker. Joker stuff? Joker yeah. stuff. Well, go yeah, on. Man. Let's let's do some Joker stuff. They thought Joker we were all going to be doing day. Joker stuff. <laughs> They did. They yeah. thought everyone was going to go do Joker stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, true. There was a real concern for like a week before mm -hmm. it came out. I was a little concerned that Joker stuff was going to go down. Sure. Yeah. It's yeah. Very, a very disturbing movie. Well, but not you, to everyone else. You could say out, this which is fine. You could say this about literally any movie that comes out in America, but there were some mass shootings in the lead up to it. Yes. Yeah. Uh, right. I mean, sadly, I that's, that's true that's, about that's, every that's film. That's also true. I do will, little, though, yeah. so. Right. That's just like the state of America in 2020. We don't need a movie to come out to inspire people yes. to do terrible things. Yes. Yeah. Uh, as as a group uh, who has who has gotten some death threats from uh, various jokers. Uh, in Joker avatars, in addition to, uh, you know, a couple of mass shooting in America. Like, I got it at, f like, I was like, yeah, okay, I get the idea that some people would be a little like, right, like, now, we need this movie now, but also, once I saw it, I was like, oh, yeah, no, I don't think this was gonna. There what? also was a lot of, like, before people had seen the movie, but when mm -hmm. we knew the movie was coming out, there was a lot of speculation as to what might the movie be about or what the like the sort of themes were going to be, and a lot of them were wrong. So I think a <laughs> yeah. lot of that was... Which is weird to me, though, because, and we can get into this, but when you're like, we're doing a movie about the Joker, I should know what the themes of right. and ideas and things in that movie are. Or maybe you didn't do like a solid movie about the Joker? Well, that's the thing. I mean, uh, Todd Phillips has said, you know, the quiet part loud, that like he's just making a, a cool 70s throwback uh, movie that he's going to call the Joker and get made by a studio. <laughs> Haha, -ha, that's the ultimate Joker stuff. <laughs> it is. Was the way he was going to, I think in his own words, he said he was going to like sneak this movie into theaters by by making yeah. it a comic book movie. Well, no, like Joaquin, uh, if you go back and watch his acceptance, I think it's for the Critics' Choice Award. He was just like, yeah, we, <laughs> we, we fooled a bunch of people into giving us money to make this movie about mental illness. Yeah. I mean, they're, not, they're not hiding what, what, what is happening, which right. is that, you know. And yet, sure. I love this movie. I think I like this. Uh, movie a lot. I did my best to uh, distance myself from the hype surrounding it, uh, mm -hmm. to just watch it, uh, including uh, Todd Phillips, uh, Todd Phillips isms, and just go in and, and and watch it as a movie. And I really like this as a counterpoint to a Batman movie. Um, mm -hmm. I think this actually. I like it the best when I evaluate it as a DC movie, as a comic book movie, as a movie about the clown with magic gadgets that <laughs> squirt Batman with acid. <laughs> Rather than like, you're like, oh, well, it's just like the king of comedy or it's just like Taxi Driver. Those are masterpieces. Like, the fact that it's not that good, it, it, to me, is not a knock on it. Well, no, it's not being as good as some of the best movies Martin Scorsese's ever made. It's, I mean, that 98% of other films don't match up to that yeah. benchmark. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess I get where people were like, oh, it's a Scorsese ripoff. Like, I don't think it's necessarily a Scorsese ripoff. It's got a lot of similarities in some aspects, but I, yeah, for me, it's all Joaquin. Mm. Joaquin is the one that, like, even as I was watching it again, because I saw it the first time and it really, you know, really kind of got to me. But the second time I watched it after I'd seen it and it knew it was coming, and the, like the, that kind of wore off a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like it didn't quite hold up as much to me on a second viewing. What did continue to hold up, and I think will always continue to hold up, is Joaquin's performances. Performance likely to be an Oscar-winning performance and well deserved. Uh, because he is he is uh, phenomenal in yep. this movie. Yeah, I mean, I think that, like, what my big knock on it, and I, I did, the first time I saw it, I really liked it. I still like it. I think technically there's a lot that's great going on. It's a great-looking movie. The score is great. Joaquin is great. Um, but I think that, you know, one of the criticisms that comes up the second and third time through is it's a lot of great work being done, but I'm not really sure what the movie is is speaking to. Like, Taxi Driver, King of Comedy, when you're done, you feel like, I get what the take is on this person and this world, and, like, I get kind of what Scorsese and De Niro are sort of saying with this. With Joker, it feels like they're throwing a lot of ideas out there, but none of them is, like, V.I 
idea. Lon, the theme was very clearly, what do you get? We're not <laughs> yeah. we're not a crazed loner. Right. And I mean we talk about this a little in the trailer where it's like there's the mental illness thing and then there's like he was desperate for fame and attention. Mm -hmm. He always felt like nobody sort of paid attention to him. And then there was there's also like cutting social services mm -hmm. and like sort of class yeah, Revolution. I think that the movies there's like two uh, two tracks that the movie is going on for me. This is my reading of it. Is that there's the society way uh, uh, track that it's on, which is like, oh, we're we're, uh, we're in this increasingly atomized society where uh, the top the people at the higher rungs are shitting down on the people at the bottom. Uh, uh, there was that point message being made, and then the Joker on a character level, it was a man. It was like a true tragedy in like the Aristotle sense of like this guy's flaw is he's so isolated, and most movies would have him overcome that and find connection and grow and or just make some kind of uh, reaching out to other people, but it's him being more isolated and disintegrating more and more, which we're not used to seeing. I don't think we're used to seeing tragedies, even like movies that are dark and gritty, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's some uh, the character at the center of it evolves in some way positive or towards something. This guy was just a, somebody falling apart, which we don't see very often. Yeah, I. I, and I get that. Uh, and also really like Joaquin's performance. It's kind of the only thing that holds the thing together for me. Um, and I agree with you on the tragedy thing. We're not quite used to them. But I, I feel like even in solid tragedies, whether whether you're talking about Oedipus Rex or Breaking <laughs> Bad, your protagonist is still active. It's a tragedy, but they're still actively making choices well, towards I mean, one way to Inherently, and he, it's and, like a fatal flaw. That's like your, right. your, your tragic fate is brought about by But your, he kind of you know. just gets pushed along and then shoots someone and then the movie ends. Like, So that's where it falls for me. And I like this isn't a situation where it's like Suicide Squad where I'm just like, let's take a big old dump. Like, <laughs> This is more of just like, I'm like, oh, here's where this doesn't work for me, which is fine. Yell at me in the comments. Uh, <laughs> But um, as like a Joker movie, it it's it weirdly doesn't work because he's like, oh, I I don't have an agenda and I'm not political. Where like the Joker would have an agenda, like a guy actively choosing that Joker lifestyle um, <laughs> would would choose to like take advantage of all of these combustible elements and stuff like that um, for his for his own gain. Because he's the Joker and he's a villain, and that's what he's supposed to do. That's like his. That's the tragedy. You want to root for this guy to not be Walter White, but he's going to end up being Walter White anyway, right? Um, and then as like a non-Joker movie, it's it's still it's then it's just like a slow. It's like Grave of Fireflies, which is beautifully done, but like that movie's just a slow descent into two kids dying, and it's like sure, okay, <laughs> yeah, cool. I guess I just you guys want to go to Applebee's as a counterpoint to a to a Batman film. It's just a, for me, it was a really good flipping of the tables where it's like Batman also birthed in tragedy, mm -hmm. uh, also kind of a loner and and disconnected. But he and he's also someone who thinks society, big ass society, is messed up. But he takes that out on the people below him. He's a billionaire who beats the crap out of people lower on the socioeconomic sure. ladder from him. Again, <laughs> it's just random people he's pulling off the streets. Uh, They're criminals. Uh, uh, <laughs> who's deciding who's the criminal, Dan? Batman. Batman. <laughs> because the police <laughs> won't. <laughs> They're corrupt. <laughs> They're corrupt. And the city would be spiraling out of control. Obviously, there are extenuating circumstances all this. I just thought it was an interesting reversal of perspective where Joker, same sort of emotional, maybe, societal origins as Batman, but he directs all that rage, all that uh, uh, um, alienation up the chain of society, up towards the people above him, whereas Batman is punching down. Yeah. See, I, 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 we'll get to the trailer eventually, mm. I promise. Get, get your video starts at blank comments ready. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I always thought in the second th t time it even struck me more, it actually was like he's, he, and, and it might have just kind of your your point, Joe, about him being kind of kicked along, but it's like he doesn't really start anything. He he yeah. does what what happens in his life is not like he doesn't kill anybody to start a movement. Right. Um, he's just spiraling, right. and the world around him is growing more chaotic mm -hmm. and more. And they take inspiration that he doesn't necessarily mean for it for it to be taken which i think is sort of wh wh when it culminates with him just sort of for the first time taking inventory of just like oh wow 
like yeah. look at look at this um but uh, yeah i think it's I agree. It's a bit. It was. It's always a bit muddled for me. I don't. I don't like the Batman stuff that's in there. I almost would have preferred this to be a Gotham and a Joker that didn't have mm -hmm. Batman. Oh, when they came out of the theater, I was like, Batman. Yeah, I don't like the scene at the. Necessary. I don't like the scene at Wayne Manor. Yeah, and, uh, Wayne stuff. Yeah, I don't. I do think they have a lot of fun with the like Bat Batman iconography. Like one of the best shots in the movie is when he like reaches into his mouth to get the blood and like paints the Joker lips on himself, mm -hmm. which is like right out of a Batman comic. Mm -hmm. And like that's that's like how to really use the imagery to drive what they're doing home and like I like that stuff mm -hmm. But yeah, I didn't I don't really yeah. I mean not only does it make the timeline not work Like if this is the Joker, how can Batman be a little boy? because Jared Leto is his <laughs> son beating up a 70 year old Joker and yeah. like, well, I'm just not really concerned about the timeline. It's like an Elseworlds thing Maybe in this version Batman and the Joker never meet each other. This is just yeah. happens to be this iteration of Gotham City Yeah, this the Joker's Joker, the inspiration uh, for the Batman uh, I think, um, right. is, you know uh, yeah, I, I I don't know. I just uh, I I wouldn't have done the imaginary stuff. I think uh, like people say Dex. Did you guys watch Dexter? Yeah, uh, part of it. People yeah, always beginning. talk about how Dexter stopped working because how do you top the Trinity Killer? After in season three, but I think it stopped working because uh, spoilers for Dexter, uh, because they kill his wife, they kill Rita, they yeah. kill his anchor to humanity, and he doesn't have Arthur Fleck doesn't have anything like that in this movie. So there's no anchor yes. to connect him to. There's nothing to like root for him through. Like you want that maybe. Does he have a connection to Zazie Beetz's well, character? Well, there were there were all sorts you know? of anchor. It was like a progressive yanking out, yank, anchor yanking. Of like his, uh, That's my favorite Comedy Central anchor, show. Ank yankers. <laughs> the, the social worker, his mother, Zazie, uh, his uh, surrogate father. Again, he was somebody looking for connection over and over again. And then the the tragi tragic tragic part was he inspired this huge movement that he he at the end no intention to. of yeah and he had he, no intention of starting. Right. If this was a, a, a not a tragedy, he. Would have mm -hmm. uh, he would have been like yes I am your leader I finally yes. found my family here among the clowns but he didn't right um, yeah which is a, it's a, a choice in the fire yeah exactly I think the anchors would have worked better if he wanted them like in the in his therapy he's always just like you don't listen like he's never like I desperately need this you know yeah. I think he does because he's like who am I gonna go to get my medicine from who, who, I mean you know I mean the there's that, he does but... Joker stuff is because they cut all the funding and he can't get his meds anymore yeah well, but it's, that's it's, a big I, part I mean, of it again, I think this debate <laughs> Yeah, it's like we're all saying the same thing. It's like because they, they try to have it everywhere. There's like twelve explanations, mm. and they're they're trying the all. And, and when you're doing that, it's sort of like well, then none of them feels like the explanation. Like the movie's kind of about how many different excuses can we come up with for him to do Joker stuff, <laughs> as opposed to here's the story. A to B, here's mm -hmm. how this man ended up becoming the Joker in a more clearly defined way. Like, I think that's kind of the problem. Like, that doesn't mean that the movie has no value. I it's, think that Joaquin's um, doing a great job. I just feel like they, the movie just never pinpoints what it's really saying. I mean, if you're gonna, the real Joker stuff of this movie is I'm about to say something nice about the killing joke. Um, which I don't want to do. Um, <laughs> but there is a, a strong piece of drama around the idea of all it takes is one bad day. And, you know, the guy trying to do the right thing and finally, you know, giving in to, to that, to that, to that darker sense. And instead of all it takes is one bad day, this movie's just like, everything's bad right out the gate. I'm Joker right out the gate. <laughs> Area, this I don't sucks. Think was, I, don't, I don't think he was Joker wow. until like pretty close to the end of the movie. Like, even at the very end, isn't he like? Didn't you get the sense he was going out on Murray Franklin's show to kill himself? He was. He, well, no, he I mean, it wasn't the sense. He rehearsed. We see he him was rehearse going out that there version of it, like, and then it's mm -hmm. almost like in the moment. I don't think he's the Joker until he kills uh, uh, not Alec Baldwin, uh, De Niro. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Baldwin was going to play Thomas Wayne. I got yeah. confused. Uh, regardless, I like a movie where uh, it inspires this much discussion around yep. Joker yeah. things rather than, I don't know, how long do we talk about Guardians 2? It was like, oh, his dad's bad. The yeah. end. Uh, so let's, uh, let's watch the Oz trailer and talk more. It's a movie fight. This is about to break out in here. <laughs> his arc is the one thing I could track, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Let's do it. From the studio who won't release the Snyder Cut and this guy. I'm sorry, you have 
the most beautiful feet. What's those feet? What's comes a piece yeah. about psychological and social decay with the bare minimum of Batman it took to get the movie made. There, look, with the pearls and everything. <laughs> Happy. If that were Batman's origin story, wouldn't he become Clown Man? Wouldn't the most scary thing to him be clowns and he wanted to take the power of clowns? I shall back become a clown. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you don't know. He could also have the like Chris Nolan, like underground bat cave by Wayne Manor that freaks him out he when he's like a boy. Like, we could have just, just not mm -hmm. seen that like off screen somewhere. I mean, I don't know. I'd be like afraid of guns if I were. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'd if become I, Gun Man. If I was this, I'd be afraid of Alfred. He's got a very stern <laughs> taskmaster like Alfred. I don't know. I feel become like Alfred, Butler Man. Alfred could have been sterner. Well, We'll talk about that in a second. Do you think but that was a studio note? It needs Alfred. It needs that, the, that they need to put the Batman's origin in the movie. Probably. I, uh, that feels reads like to it. me very much like a studio I note. I think they needed mm -hmm. to do the, at minimum two they were like, Batman. Listen, scenes. there will be a riot if uh, if there yeah. is not Batman stuff yeah. amidst the Joker stuff. The, the yeah. scene definitely feels like it's only there in the present movie, so that later when he confronts Thomas Wayne, he's like, "You're the guy that was my house. That was at my house the other day." Like that's the only context for it. Right. So yeah, I don't. I think it feels like uh, it felt like a studio note. To me, and I don't think it was necessary. And I'm a huge yeah. Batman, fan, but I was just even I was just like, I don't care about Batman right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't. Who cares? Joker Go back stuff. to Joker. <laughs> that stuff, it's not necessary. And then you, we really don't need to go back to crime. But we all know what happens in crime, crime now. If oh, they the moment just they showed them walking up. in, I'd be like, okay. Yeah, they walk we in the don't. Yeah. With pearls, the pearls yeah. and we just or, like, dun, dun, dun. or walking out, and the riots going on. I can. I, I'm a big kid. I can go. Hmm. Yeah, we, we, yeah. we. I don't need just, to walk into Crime well, Alley. Thomas there should have been a sign that said Crime Alley. It plays comically now because we've seen it's become a joke because we've seen it in movies so much. I don't think there's any way to shoot that scene that I wouldn't chuckle yeah. at now. And that's the real Joker stuff. But <laughs> yeah. Thomas Wayne not winning Father of the Year in this universe. Oh no! Yeah, there's a clown rat going on to the pictures. <laughs> Let's go see. Yeah, see what's playing. Well, it wasn't starting. It wasn't going on when the movie started. It's like uh, it's like it was raining when you got out. <laughs> it, was like, oh, hey. it wasn't raining when you went into. The Oh, uh, honey, we got uh. stuck in another clown riot. Yeah. Or is it sort of a parasite thing of like, oh, what are the poor's doing? Eh, we're going to yeah, see Zorro. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's keep going. Thing. Happy Joker. Prepare for a film the media said was too dangerous for you to see, which made audiences way more excited than regular marketing ever could have. Cruising its way to a billion dollars on a 55 million budget because it got hyped like a cinematic fear toxin that would turn you into the Joker, even though it ended up being a mumblecore Scorsese riff about the world's saddest clown. <laughs> hey, I wish movies turned you into the protagonist. I've been watching Iron Man for 12 years and I'm still a moron. <laughs> Journey so pause. To I mean, I think we get this every decade or so where it's like, this media will turn you into a psychopath, right? The Matrix. Yeah, the, right. The, the post Columbine. Did they do thing that to Matrix? Like, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, of the, the Columbine kids were in oh, the trench yeah. coat, so the trench coat mafia, they dress like the Matrix, right. you yeah, know, and, that thing. I mean, video games, as long as they've been around. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And look, I think that the, the rebuttal to that, aside from I can't pull any research out of my butt, but it's like, it's an R-rated movie for a reason. Like, I wouldn't show yes. this to a child because children can't tell fiction yeah. from reality. They're idiots. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but again, otherwise, also, I, I think it's a movie. A lot of that stuff, too, was just based on, there was all this stuff before the movie came out that was like, it's going to be this rallying cry for angry young white men, and this is like the incel movie. And like people were already freaked out about that stuff because of other things that are going on in America and politics. Well, I think well, everyone at this table can attest, we've all been yelled at by people with Joker avatars. Of course, of yes. course, yes. of course. But it also was part of, and, and, uh, and, and uh, I'm going to talk about my own profession a part-time freshman year for a little bit. It, uh, part of it was because it premiered at Toronto and Venice and the film festivals, and it became it got enrolled in what I sometimes like to call the Critic Olympics, mm. which is the, the 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 critics that get to see these movies first. Oftentimes, will engage in a hyperbole off to see who can get the best, uh, who can get the most reads, mm. who can get the best pull quotes, and who can uh, you know <clears throat> get their names on the most uh, in the most stories and stuff. And so I feel like Joker, while I found it to be, and if you go back and watch the review, Roth and I both. Were very disturbed by the movie because it's I I, th I still think it's a disturbing sure. film, especially sure. the first time you see it. But I think that it also partly got mixed up into a, a hot take a palooza from people that had seen it to people that hadn't seen it. Are just like okay, 
how can we how can we be in, more inflammatory than the other one because right now no one else has seen it but mm -hmm. we have uh, and that's not to say that all critics and all people that see movies uh, early are disingenuous because they're not but a lot of times I have found and I will observe and even I'll just kind of shake my head sometimes with, with great movies and with with movies that aren't so great like when emoji movie or cats comes out there's often a hyperbole off of sure. who can love it the most slash hate yeah. it the most slash yeah. come up with the biggest uh, yeah. But it's also I don't even think it's too you're right there is an incentive to uh, uh, hype it or trash it more than you would normally, but I think that there's maybe a genuine feeling of when you see something at a festival or at a premiere or whatever, it feels different than yeah. when you're seeing it. it. it definitely, Festivals that's are That's definitely true. Yeah. But it's also mm -hmm. this, it's this game of internet telephone. It's like the people who've seen it have their reactions, and then people who haven't seen it read those reactions, and then they report yes. to others about the reactions and to others, and then it spreads, and it often ends up being a story about a movie that doesn't really have that much to do with the movie. And I think mm -hmm. this movie, especially, when you would be reading a lot of the discourse around it, then you'd see the movie and be like, well, this was really different from what the discourse was. And I think that fed a lot of the, like, real terror around this movie, well, is that people just had a weird idea of what it was. Because that's how Twitter works. I think right. one critic said, like, this is an incel rallying cry. And then, like, people took that one tweet, and then they tweeted it, Right. 15,000 times, yeah. and so that one person's or those few people's thoughts on the movie became the narrative about the movie yeah. because this tiny fraction of the voice got amplified 500 mm -hmm. times. Exactly. It's the story and it's like of social the, uh, media. This is going to be this movie that's justifying the yeah, anger and domestic terrorism and all this stuff, and then you watch the movie, and it's like, it's about a sad clown man right. who goes on TV <laughs> and, gets beat and up inspires a lot. other angry clowns. But shouldn't it have been a tell when it like won the Toronto Film Festival and like Venice, right? It won, Ven Venice. Ven it won the it uh, won Golden Bear, I believe. Lion? The Golden Lion? I it it's won, a lion. Uh, there was some kind of a furry animal that was golden. And I think it's, it's like a no lion. notorious incels at the Venice Film Festival <laughs> says the best, <laughs> the best movie that came out. Um, and like Michael Moore's well, coming out calling it a masterpiece. This like, is where we need to shout out the real Joker of all of this, Ben Meckler on Twitter, mm -hmm. who um, is. Did he do a Fidelity Onions thing? Uh, his, <laughs> this is my, my favorite of his. If you don't know who Meckler is, uh, anytime a movie comes out, uh, all the websites just blindly pull Twitter like pull quotes and he just makes them up and everyone always falls for them and they're great but his Joker ones during <laughs> during the festival was like Joker got into our hearts most of the critics and I have taken to the streets we flipped a car yeah. <laughs> we've been running we've been running we've been running it's been hours <laughs> and like that was getting yeah. put on like EW.com yeah, oh it was beautiful keep doing keep doing what you're doing oh, I hope fandom slash screen junkies doesn't get tricked by you uh, I'm boy. sure we have I'm sure we already have. Yeah. I had to head, shook my head once. It was just like, oh no. I'm sure that is happening. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. <laughs> Journey to 1980s Gotham, where the garbage is high, the clown rental business is booming. There's a lot of clowns and for everything him. is yellow. From this urban squalor, a Joker will rise in <laughs> Arthur go. Flack. And yellow. if Marvel is known for making their heroes get ribbed, DC will one-up them by making their star get ribs. He's a loner who deserves all your sympathy for being poor and mentally ill, but earns all of your contempt for being a viral video star and wannabe comedian. Uh, he's got the faded hoodie and everything. Pause. Dude uh, reject the joke. Uh, that is uh, also, uh, the hoodie is, uh, <laughs> I don't know if it was intentional or not, a recreation of his wardrobe from The Village. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to say the viral video thing. Who was taping that open mic night in yeah. uh, early in the 80s? 80s? The 80s <laughs> make this one tough, right? Yeah. The 80s made that a little that's a, that's a bit of a conceit. Where, where did well, the takeover okay. and then how did Murray Franklin get it? I guess the house, they have also, like a house video feed, but like, or there's just a guy with a huge VHS camera. Yeah, that's just like, like the kind where you detach the VCR and it's in a bag. And I you, did like that it's a callback to that era in late night TV when they were just like, we have an hour to fill every night and like nothing. And so we're just going to like, here's a crazy guy from the neighborhood. You know, like how Letterman used to have like the guy who made his sandwiches at the deli on the right. show. We couldn't figure out, remember we, we debated, was Murray Franklin's show a national show That's or a local ask. show? Because right. I think it was local, but yeah. Gotham is so big that it went yeah, out to a was, bunch of people. If Gotham is New York, then it's national, but if it's not, I think it's a local I think <laughs> show, it's, which I think, I think is awesome. I think it's local, but it, like f f 
eight million people watch it because it's in Gotham. Right? I mean, he's probably like like Carson Daly, like last call, <laughs> you know, like after the national one. Then there's there's because he had like did he have like Doctor Ruth on at the he end did. or something but like that's that? But that's that's a throwback to Johnny but, Carson. But yeah. in the eighties, that would have been huge. So yeah, you're right. True. Yeah. yeah, I think it's I think he's the I mean, not the Fallon of his day, but it's the <laughs> Carson. I mean, yeah. it's obviously riffing on the Carson yeah. show. Yeah. 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 I still think he's uh, got it's the animal, right? Doesn't he have somebody from the zoo come on at one point? Well, he's got his own Ed McMahon guy. Right, yeah. I think it's supposed to be like Carson. Yeah. Right. Anyway, keep going. Median. Which late night uh, host is he's he got the to use? Sound off in the comment. Tom Dude, looks like he's about to ask you to do his podcast. <laughs> Go back to the open mic, you piece of s. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Some joke. Danielle wrote that line. She has ego. true self contempt. So <laughs> I just want to watch the world burn. Now, this version is here to teach you a lesson. You should show more compassion for the mentally ill, or they'll snap and kill you. <laughs> <laughs> but this Joker has a few unique tricks up his sleeve, like the superhuman capacity to, um, bathe the elderly. Joker stuff. Sleep in a refrigerator. <laughs> Joker stuff. Someone wrote like that's the Mister. And instead of writing <laughs> damaged on his forehead, just damage his forehead. Super headbutt powers. Ow. Yikes. Oh, yeah, Better fight Batman quick before he turns 12 and overpowers him. Come on, it's got swings, can't do nothing. <laughs> Experience of fit. Is there a Blu ray special feature of just the Dolby artist doing the headbutt sound effects? Oh, yeah, just a bag of Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm curious now to like what exactly they were using to create the like wet. Sound of Wucky V slamming his head into well, things. Well, I think we, method. we're I think free to. Do you think he's really doing yeah, it? I think he's yeah, doing it. we're free to speculate. Um, uh, Todd Phillips said that uh, there are no. Uh, they filmed stuff that wasn't in the movie, but there will be no deleted scenes Phillips on the Blu-ray. Right. Uh, 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 this is the Phillips cut, um, and he did something in the in the bath or in something that was so twisted, like oh man, it, it wouldn't have even gotten an R rating. It would have been X. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what do you think he did? What do you guys think he did in the bath? I don't want to know. <laughs> what do you think Joaquin Phoenix did? A number of things. <laughs> yeah, good boy. I don't think Todd Phillips knows what movie he made. Do you think he had like I mean, a, I like oh, a, that's a whole other he painted his dong like a little clown? <laughs> <laughs> Just doing Joker stuff. I like the idea. I like the idea. Tom Phillips is referring to like just bathing his mother and forgot that he left it in the movie. It's like we have a scene in here that is so twisted and unbelievable. No, Todd, that's in there. That's a, he's bathing his. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For Francis right. Conroy, I agreed to do it. Yeah. No, guys, there's a a, a a baby, and the Joker's gonna pretend that it jerks off. It's so twisted. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, there uh, there's a tiger, and uh, and Mike Tyson's gonna pretend that it jerks off. It was twisted. Yeah. Ken Jong's in the tub with them. And, uh, it's the Hangover Three. Yeah, more so than twisted. the scene, I'd like to see Todd Phillips, Joaquin Phoenix, and like the co-writer sit around trying to figure out what it should be. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Just uh, that story meeting. Not twisted enough, bro! <laughs> so this is already going to be two hours long. Uh, I'm just going to ask the question. Were there sign spinners in the 80s? Because I don't remember them. I think that was a modern invention. Yeah. Was it? I they don't were know. like sandwich board guys. Right. But yeah. the arrow with the trickery. Yeah. I don't okay. recall that, but also... <laughs> but it was also made of wood. In addition to that, I feel like... <laughs> if, make you, them like they use if you were a store that's going out of business, you're like, you know what, we should hire a guy to spin a sign in front of the store and let people know. You're not going to like call some clown talent agency. You just hire a guy. No, no, no. <laughs> one of you, uh, one of you made the note, and it was, a, was it you? I believe it you was were me. like a block down. There's just a sign on like a yeah on a stand pointing somewhere. Like they could have well, there was so also much money. A, the like a guy on an upright yeah. piano. Yeah, I think much piano more, guy. Yeah. It was a piano guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think much double, more inclined to stop with the piano guy. Oh, yeah. I thought that was like the soundtrack. No, to it was the a clothing. music store. Yeah. Oh. So the guy, but I would be like, why does why like, the piano guy is a great draw? <laughs> Just like hey, one of the one Way of the people, you can't have two piano guys next to each other, or it just uh, there's a whole bar so industry discordant. that's built on that. One of the one of the <laughs> clerks, <laughs> one of the clerks who works at your store has like a, a kid brother who will come spin a sign outside your place. Look. You don't need a clown agency to hook you up with a clown no. to specifically spin signs. Like oh, for spinning this sign, we're gonna want a pro clown. You don't want to go with some no. rank if, at this point. It seems like a hat on a hat or a, no, a nose yeah, on a nose. Yeah, at this point, have that off. If you need to eke out that living and you're not one of the big clowns like Bozo, you move to the Bay Area. You go, you go to Pier 39. 
And uh, yeah, you, you, yeah, you got to in on that street what, performing. What, West City, where's the flash from? Coast City. <laughs> Coast, Coast, City. City. Yeah. Coast City. Coast City Pier 39, and yeah. uh, you, uh, you get into arguments with the jugglers once a week on yeah. who gets the prime spot. Okay, there we go. Well, there you go. <laughs> our best five minutes about spinning a sign in go. Gotham. Tight five. All right, let's keep going. <laughs> Experience a film with one of the all-time great Joaquin Phoenix gangly loner performances and one of the, let's say, third most uncomfortable Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix interviews. Uh, people in the comments are Is suggesting some even more awkward ones. Oh, I'm sure. Do I have a large frog in my hair? This one's just mushrooms. <laughs> this one's our favorite. No, something's crawling out of my scalp. That shows off one of the greatest actors of our generation's no, incredible range from laughing normally. <laughs> to laughing because of a medical condition. <laughs> <laughs> to laughing maniacally. <laughs> to cry laughing. A lot of good laughs. <laughs> to every laugh in between. This one sounds like a sick pug. Yeah. Now pause. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, uh, I know I'm twisted and, and like to do Joker stuff, but there were there was there was one point in this movie that I genuinely laughed out loud and I uh, maybe feel bad for it is when his gun falls out in the children's hospital. <laughs> that, that was great. That was funny. That, that, was, that was great. Yeah. But there's that a was... few shots that are definitely <laughs> meant to be funny. I think that's one of them. My favorite is when he's doing his famous dance on the steps and then we tilt up to see. Uh, Shay Wingham and Bill Camp as the cops just like, what is this guy doing? What is he doing? <laughs> that like a lot of people were pointing out that it seemed like it was not, but like that's obviously meant to be funny. Yeah. That's a, that's in there as a joke. I wanted more stuff like that in the movie. I just thought it worked better than uh, burying you with sad. Mm -hmm. Like I like the gun thing and the children's. Oh, that was so so good. Well, and, it's like um, yeah, Todd Phillips, a guy who kind of knows how to like comic yeah. timing. Yeah, he and, does. You know, like that's his. That's his bit. Definitely wanted a whole lot more of that. Comedy? Yes. <laughs> I want to like hang over three levels yeah. of comedy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know, I just, that, that, those moments worked for me. The, the, those character moments, uh, I mean, the, the, lo the stairs is a little Looney Tunes, but like the, the children's, or not Looney, but like. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, no, it's ridiculous, yeah. Uh, like, but like the mind. children's hospital scene where the gun pops out, uh, that, that's super fun. And that, that tells, his like reaction to that tells me me more interesting stuff about the character than like, I don't know. I like the, the, just, see, the joke he told on Murray Franklin I thought was funny. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's like anti-humor, but he's like, your wife called, she's dead or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, for me, uh, I think that, 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 that laughs in a movie like this act as a, as a, as a release valve, and I don't, I, would, I, I, I don't think you want to do that. I think this mm. whole movie's about ratcheting tension. I think if you put in laughs, then you'd just be releasing the tension every 10 or 15 minutes. and uh, Then you're watching Thor Ragnarok. Yeah. <laughs> or something. <laughs> I don't know. They blew up a whole planet in that one. Yeah. No one cared, because there's a joke. Right after, because <laughs> Korg had yeah, something yeah, to say. Yeah, exactly. So you know, I don't want. I didn't want him to pull the pull the the the, the release valve on yeah. me. I think the tension uh, built it. How did I go from in the middle to defending it? It's like it's like a Jurassic Park. It's like <laughs> I brought you here to defend me from these people, and the only one on my side is the grumpy dude. Uh, there you go. All right, let's keep going. We'll see if we can finish within two hours. Yeah, I know. I know you so think a film charts. that was 70% <laughs> laughing and dancing would be more a beat, but the other 30% is getting the crap kicked out of him. Joke stuff. <laughs> Joke stuff. Joke stuff. We should have made a taxi driver joke. <laughs> Some type of way uh, yeah. society. Yeah. This movie does, and the message it's is going not, to be in close up there. and low, just in case <laughs> you missed it. <laughs> because the true villains of Joker are uncaring billionaires, misogynist Wall Street jerks. Don't ignore him. He's being nice to you. Lack of government funding. The city has cut funding across the board. Social services is part of that. And easy access to guns. We gotta protect Still yourself. Be a sad clown without so that. wait, it wasn't an incel rallying cry or an anti SJW screed? How is it possible that every hot take about this movie was wrong, including the directors? So <laughs> enjoy. Pause. We could probably do a, another hour on uh, uh, the woke culture comedy uh, debate. Uh, yeah. uh, safely say the larger point is. Uh, 
I think we talked about it. We talked about this already. Is all the hot takes didn't match up with the film itself. Yeah, we actually had an expanded version of this where it was a lot of like the stuff Todd Phillips said yeah. in the aftermath of the movie coming out. They were just like, you're not, you're not, you're not helping. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. I mean, it made a billion dollars. <laughs> no, I mean, you're not helping in terms of the, uh, the yeah. counterpoint. Your movie just made one billion dollars. Yeah. So. Well, there you go. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. No, I see what you're saying. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Again, I'm not sure he knows what movie he made. Yeah, I think, like, uh, I made light of The Hangover 3, but I'll also make heavy of it. It's not a funny movie, <laughs> and it's nope. not because of woke culture. It's because a lot of these things are hack at this point. Like, comedy well, yeah. does change about every 10 years, and the same things aren't as funny as they used to be, and that's perfectly fine. Yelling a slur at somebody is just, like... It's not funny. It's, it's not funny. Like, like uh, of the many of the many problems with that kind of humor, uh, one of them is that it's just it's kind of cheap and not funny. And there was yeah. a while that it kind of skated by on shock value. But that's the like, thing. Shock value. Set not, aside your personal feelings on uh, 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 slurs and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, for me, bad. But there's uh, uh, comedy relies. Well, that's so the real Joker yeah, stuff. Yeah, the real Joker <laughs> stuff. Comedy relies so much on surprise that when you lose the element of surprise and you know what the joke is going to be, it's going to be, mm -hmm. uh, then it's not funny anymore, eventually. It's not funny. Yeah. So find something new yeah. to joke about. I mean, I think the whole comment like gives away that he thinks it's not a question that there was any dip in quality from Hangover 1 to 3. Like, right. from his perspective, it's like, well, you loved Hangover 1, and you don't love Hangover 3, so you guys changed, man. It's like, no, no. I no think making it's like, the same jokes over right. and over again it's gets like, old. It, yeah. Yeah. It's not woke culture killing it. It's just it. not it's like yeah, fresh new material. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anyways, that's my rant. Keep going. The directors... So enjoy a Joker movie that's such a thoughtful, challenging comic book movie, it almost qualifies as a movie movie with a take on the iconic character that perfectly fits our current day and age, that isn't fun like the 60s, innocent like the 80s, grim like the 2000s, or embarrassing like the 2010s, but exists less as a story than a piece of content to hysterically react to and immediately forget until the next outrage comes along. Everybody just yells and screams at each other. I'm so sick of this society. It makes me so mad I'm gonna lose it and do Joker stuff. Mom, get in the bath. <laughs> Starring Good read, John. Moper. They're all gonna laugh at you. <laughs> Don't trust SZ in apartment AB because she's yeah. imaginary. <laughs> you are not the father. Lil Wayne. Don't you go round and round to reroll. I heard you paint faces. Hey Arthur, are we cool? And stairs. So, the dance of death. <laughs> we had to, right? Yeah, right? Seems too good to pass up. Yeah, I mean, listen. It's an old gag. We gotta figure out new ways. If you're watching this long in this video, you know what we're referencing. <laughs> <laughs> There's the shot. Dance Dance Revolution. Great title, huh? Thank you, thank you. Me here at last on the ground, <laughs> and you win the air. These finance guys know all the words to send in the clowns. A lot of late night Sondheim sessions with the boys. Yeah, we know the chorus, yeah, but people, come on. People got upset at Marriage Story, like, oh, he knew, just knows that song of the like, theater, he's a theater producer. Theater director. Theater director. Theater director. Of course what he does. Nobody got upset with these guys. <laughs> this in the '80s. It was like, yeah. it was like new, right? These guys I mean, know <laughs> the Gordon Gecko speech, but then, they don't know Send in the Clowns. I, I looked this up, like, because it was, it was a popular, like, it had. There were versions of Send in the Clowns on the radio. Yeah, but like none that was like a number one on Billboard, like, these guys would know the, all the words. <laughs> it's a twisted alternate reality, Lon. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone's... Yeah, if clown. all of them I mean, were... this is a very clown intense world. Like, they yeah. have clown rental mm -hmm. industries. It's the Wall true. Street guys are singing clown yeah. stuff. There's they a clown riot. Clowns. I guess it's like from that era before everyone was scared of clowns. Clowns yeah. were just more prevalent. Like, today, you're taking a risk. You're alienating part of your customer base if you put a clown, clown on something. Stuff, yeah. No. A lot of people I, I, are scared I, I, of clowns. Yeah, in this reality, like, a clown is a status symbol. <laughs> like, <laughs> everyone used to have their own clown. Only the yeah. finest establishment. <laughs> Snobby clowns. kids were like, Daddy, buy me a clown. <laughs> There's no clown at my birthday party. Gavin had a clown at his birthday party. Yeah, totally. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's see what we cut out of this one. Mm. Starring. Oh, just starring. Almost definitely infectious laughter. You should get checked out. He is the dancing fiend. <laughs> I flack. Walker. <laughs> Why no serious? Red Nose Day. 
Ribbed for your pleasure. Gross. Clown Prince of Grime. Stop, or my clown will shoot. Smother. Watch <laughs> the the reference I wanted. The imaginary yeah. girlfriend experience. Someday. Her. Skylar Durden. Yeah. Manic Pixie Dreamed Girl. Okay, Boomer. Scrooge McF. <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> Back to the future. Too hot Batman, for Australia. You're negative 12. <laughs> Batman Begins, Puberty, <laughs> Alfred Pennywise, Gosford Prick, Bad Wayne Manners, The Childish Man, Jerry Langford, eh, still better than Courtney, comedy. Lock the Gates, and WTF yeah, yeah. is Mark Maron doing in this? Dirty Dancing. Get ready. The yeah. Day the Clown Cry. Get some popcorn. The Scorsese Starback. Grab a drink. The Notebook. Not done yet. Funny People. <laughs> Still going. Laugh Riot. More coming. The Clown Prince of Comedy. Still going. Batman Begins. Don't In stop. another decade or so. <laughs> Remember when late night talk shows used to just bring on random local weirdos to fill time? In 2020, Arthur would have had to play categories with Channing Tatum for his segment. <laughs> so wait, is he Thomas Wayne's son? Oh no, parents' names are Batman's only weakness! Why did you say that, Dad? <laughs> this doesn't work as the Joker's origin. He's gonna be 60 by the time Batman's old enough. Oh no, is he the Joker's dad? Hunka hunka! <laughs> this film really goes out of its way to show compassion towards people suffering from mental illness, or else they'll kill you. Yeah, put it in the trailer. trailer. There yeah. you go. Yeah, there you go. That's everything we cut from Joker. We left it long because, you know, this is a big movie. And, uh, uh, yeah, people wanted to hear Why not say thoughts. all the Joker thoughts? We left are. everything twisted in the trailer. I like, yeah. there was one joke that Except I really liked. I think, it was, I think it was something from Dan's notes. Uh, you see him, like, pop his head up over the hedge at Wayne Manor. Yeah. Like, you gotta, the security at Wayne yeah, Manor whoa. is just oh. ridiculous. He gets this big game, but then he's like, hey there, little Wayne. Yeah, it's, like, it's like, wait a minute. You gotta grow those heads up. People are going to be bothering young Master Wayne all the time. Kidnapped eight times, yeah. Bruce Wayne. If you, and I was going to say about Alfred, if you see a, a lanky uh, a clown man, give your little boy flowers and then stick his fingers in their mouth. Yeah. Shoot you're, him. you're going straight to fisticuffs. Yeah. Yeah. You're, not you're not like, like hey, who hey, are you? Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, you're just no, get away from that. Immediately trying to get kill. away from the scary man. Yeah. Uh, all right, but y'all had Joker thoughts. Uh, Nian Snub, right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> How do you see future DC movies responding to Joker's success? Well, I think we're getting a Joker two, I sort of not. maybe. He's, it's the, they both said they're into they're it. No. If the idea dancing around the idea, but regardless, oh. like obviously they're not gonna make Aquaman like a fish salesman in the no. in the gutter. Or something. They're gonna take the wrong idea and make a bunch of R-rated <laughs> movies that are terrible <laughs> instead of investing in original projects that are risky. Yeah, well, to me, I think that the, yes. the, the lesson will be to do more Joker stuff, just in name only, Jai right. knows, if you will, and they'll just make, they'll just put yeah, Joker yeah, yeah. in every. I mean, I think in addition to Joker, like, yeah, I think that you you probably will see more genres that you can sort of do this with. Like, let's take a kind of movie that maybe we haven't been making as much, but figure out an angle to put these kinds of characters yeah. and scenarios in it so that there's familiarity now that we know that it'll work. They're gonna be really obvious mashups at some point where it's just gonna be like, Wally West, The Graduate, next. Right. Um, I'm into that. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> the one I was saying was like Harley Quinn in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. You know, do yeah. that in Arkham. Like, you'll yeah. get that mm -hmm. kind of thing, I think, a lot. Where it'll be like, here's a here's a kind of movie we used to make, mash right. it up with this. Like what they, you know, like when they came up with the idea, like Fast and Furious plus heist movie equals new Gold. thing. You know? Yeah. All right. Well, uh, there you go. Sir Fans a lot. I wonder if he'll appear in Birds of Prey. Mm. I will bet you he will not. <laughs> I will walk out of Birds of <laughs> but Prey. But again, it's like the timelines just up. don't even make sense. That that this Arthur Maybe Jared is going to be. She's already interacting older. with Jared Leto. Anyways, uh, let's skip that one. Uh, uh, so let's see. If we kind of addressed that one already. Uh, Patrick Paul 1203 writes, "What are your thoughts on this? I feel Uncut Gems hit many of the same notes and had many of the same messages, but was a better movie." Screen Junkies, your thoughts? Well, Uncut Gems made the mistake of not putting Spider-Man in Uncut Gems. <laughs> there was, I don't remember whose tweet this is. I'm sorry if this was yours, but somebody wrote, like, Uncut Gems would have been out here making a billion dollars if they had just called Adam Sandler's character the Riddler. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, yeah. The gamblers. Yeah, <laughs> like you know. Yeah, I, I think that there are some similarities in the sense before, like, that it is a tragedy. It's a man succumbing to his weaknesses rather than overcoming them. Uh, and yeah, it's a better movie, but, like, I don't know. I think I like Joker more because I grade it against other comic book movies. And when I, when I widen the field to include movies, yeah, Uncut Gems is better. I mean, 
watched. Yeah, I, I, I agree with some. I, I prefer Uncut Gems as a film. Um, Where does Uncut hmm. rank for you in the MCU? <laughs> <laughs> Top five, easily. <laughs> I, I'm trying to think any of the same notes, though. I guess it didn't do that really do that for me. I mean, I guess it has similar aesthetics at times and a similar tone. I mean, but... it's kind of putting you in the mindset of a character sort of on the fringe who doesn't really yeah. think like most people. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I don't. I didn't see them as very similar. Experiences. It's much more kinetic experience for me than Joker. What Joker's very. Uh, uh, yeah, it's like it takes its time and to kind of sit on moments, and I feel like Uncut Gems. Uncut Gems is just like, just a, like, like a, a knife sprint. in the ear. Yeah, yeah, he's like immersive character studies. Yeah, yeah. Uncut Gems is, like is just kind of like how fast can we get you into panic attacks? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. exactly there. All right, uh, Mariko True writes, I would guess honest trailers require multiple viewings of the movie by SJ staff, True. What yes. beverage and or food product was used to keep everyone happy? <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. Anyways, in a non-psychopathic way, like, how do we uh, not go crazy watching Joker over and over? Again? Or do they? Thank mean you for assuming that anyone cares about our happiness. Yeah, that's really oh, sweet. Wow. Or do they mean psychotropic way? Oh, interesting. Oh, uh, like what? Yeah, I don't know what what, we... what drugs Joker pairs well with. I doubt. <laughs> I doubt any. Well, um, no. Trump so cut my you guys weren't on a ton so of MDMA when you wrote this? No, Trump cut my social services, so I don't have access to my medication. Oh, no, he's got Joker to themes! <laughs> yeah, our snack situation is pretty consistent. I mean, you're looking at it, it's yeah. like coffee yeah. and Diet Coke. Coffee, coffee and Diet Coke. Uh, some Low healthy calorie, stuff, chips, some Doritos. Drinks, uh, chips. Uh, yeah. 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 So... There you go. Fascinating stuff. We have chocolate. We have we have fun-sized chocolate bars. It's nice every once Sometimes in a while. I just steal people's lunches. Yeah. Well, I guess they were hoping twisted. for like a bad like bourbon. Like, like we all knock back bourbon. We each go we're through a so fifth of bourbon per honest trail. Boring. And I'm so sorry to you guys, but all the behind the scenes questions is just yeah. imagine Dunder Mifflin with <laughs> more chuckling. It's, it's not exciting. They chuckle a lot at Dunder also, Mifflin. Also, Dunder Mifflin got insane seasons, you know, five yeah. and a half. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. We no have, one's having an affair with the sound man no. that I yeah. know of here. We have not done any parkour. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No chilly. No one shows up in office. costume yeah. to, uh, and like uh, raids each other's beet farm or whatever. There's only I, did, that I did drive into a lake last week. <laughs> True. Yep. Yep. Nice. Uh, uh, all right, that's it for Joker. Uh, I hope y'all come back next week for a much more uh, boring couple movies. Uh, the clue is they're boring and they suck. <laughs> that's what you get. Uh, we'll see you then. It's true. Hope you enjoyed this and hope you enjoy next time on All Trailer Competition. What do you get when you get a bunch of comedy writers with a bunch of crappy movies? Joe snapped. Oh no! Ah, Joker stuff. Ah.